In this video, we're going to focus on this equation. We're going to find all of the values of parameter A for each of which the equation has exactly two solutions. I'm going to show you four different solutions, each one better than the previous one. And I'll try to keep it straightforward and fast. So let's move on to our first solution. The first equation is going to be analytical. I'm just going to solve this equation straightforward. I recommend pausing the video right now and trying different values of parameter A to just see how it affects the equation, to see what happens if A equals 1, how many solutions do you have, what happens if A equals 3, how many solutions do you have for this value of parameter A, what changes for the equation and what's the point here. So with that said, let's solve it straightforward. The first thing I want to do here is I want to say that square root of x is not negative as any square root would be. Square root of 2a minus x is also non-negative, which means that the sum of these square roots is non-negative. So the parameter a itself is non-negative. But moreover, a is not equal to 0 because if it is equal to 0, then we have an equation square root of x plus square root of minus x equals 0. And I see that the only solution this equation has is x equals 0. And I need two solutions, exactly two solutions. So a equals zero doesn't fit. So my first observation is that a is a strictly positive number, which is going to help me a lot. So let's write down the equation and let's think of what we can do here. First of all, I want to square both sides of the equation to get rid of these nasty squared roots. So the left hand side squared equals a squared, which results in this. I can see that x and minus x cancel each other. And this product of squared roots is a square root of a product. But before I do that, before I turn that into a square root of product, I should say that each of these factors should be non-negative. So x is non-negative and 2a minus x is non-negative. And I should say that before I turn that into one square root. So these two expressions are both non-negative. So we have these restrictions on variable x. In the equation itself, I still have a square root. So I want to square both sides of the equation again. But first I should say that the right hand side should be non-negative. I should say that a squared minus 2a is greater or equal 0. And remember, we already said that a is a positive number, so I can divide both sides of this inequality by a, which is positive. So a minus 2 is greater or equals 0. So a is greater or equals 2. Right, so now we can square both sides of this equation to get that equation. This is a quadratic equation. Let's rearrange its terms so we have a standard quadratic equation. And let's find its discriminant. I'm actually going to evaluate its quarter discriminant because of the even coefficient here. So I'm going to have minus 4a squared minus 4, which is this 4, times a to the fourth minus 4a cubed plus 4a squared. And this is going to be equal to 16a cubed minus 4a to the fourth power because the squares obviously cancel each other. Right, so what do we want from this discriminant? What do we want from this quadratic equation? Remember that I wanted to find all values of parameter a for each of which this equation has exactly two solutions. So this equation should have exactly two solutions, which means that the discriminant should be positive. So I need to solve this inequality. And to do that, I'm going to divide both sides by a cubed because it's positive, because a is positive itself. I said it before, remember. So we divide both sides by a cubed and we have that which means that a is less than 4. So far we have a is less than 4 and a is greater or equals 2. But we also had restrictions on the variable x and we have to remember about these restrictions. So the roots of this equation x1 and 2 which look like this, these roots should meet these restrictions. So we're going to have two double inequalities. The first root should be between 0 and 2a. So we have a double inequality and the second root should also be between 0 and 2a. And we have a system of these two inequalities and each of these double inequalities is the same thing as a system of two different inequalities. So in total we have a system of four inequalities and this doesn't make me happy so I don't want to solve that. So let's do something else. Let's say that our roots could be written as a plus or minus squared root divided by four. Now, what does this mean? This means that I have two numbers evenly deviated from a number a. So let's imagine that this is a on x axis and we have a minus squared root divided by four and a plus squared root divided by four. And what do we want from these two numbers? We want them to be 
between 0 and 2a. So these deviations should be less than a because a is exactly the midpoint of this interval. So this square root divided by 4 should be less or should be equal to a. So I only have to solve one small inequality instead of solving four bigger ones. So let's multiply both sides of this inequality by 4 and square both sides of this inequality and we're going to have 16a cubed minus 4a fourth to the fourth power is less or is equal to 16a squared which is the same as this inequality which can be divided by a squared because it's a positive number which happens to be a perfect square so we complete the square and we have an inequality which is true for any value of a because any square is non-negative which means that we don't have any new restrictions on the parameter a so the answer is a is less than 4 and is more or equals to 2. So let's write down the answer. And that's it for the first solution. That was just a straightforward analytical solution. We squared both sides of the equation two times, but we had to do it carefully. We had to think of the restrictions because of the squared roots and we had to solve different inequalities. So let's move on to our second solution. The second solution is also analytical, but this time we're going to be smarter. We're going to substitute one of the squared roots. So let's say that t equals square root of x, then t squared equals x and square root of 2a minus x equals square root of 2a minus t squared. And since the original equation should have exactly two solutions, our new equation t plus square root of 2a minus t squared equals a should have exactly two non-negative solutions. So t is more or is equal to zero. This is an easier solution because I only have to square this equation once. So I have square root of 2a minus t squared equals a minus t. And I square that equation to a minus t squared equals a squared minus 2at plus t squared. But there's a restriction and a minus t should be non-negative or t is less or is equal to a. So we again have a quadratic equation and this time let's think of it differently. Let's think of the left hand side of this equation as a quadratic function and let's sketch its graph. Its graph is a parabola and we want the intersections of this parabola with x-axis to be between 0 and a because t should meet these two restrictions. And this happens under following conditions. First of all, both values of the quadratic function f of t should be non-negative at points 0 and a. So f of 0 should be non-negative as well as f of a. And by the way, we know that the x vertex of this parabola is a divided by 2. So we won't have a parabola which looks like this. Secondly, we want this parabola to cross the x-axis so the discriminant should be positive. And if I write down these three conditions as inequalities, I will have a system of these inequalities. And let's solve this system of inequalities real fast. These two inequalities are the same, which is not surprising because the parabola has a line of symmetry x equals a over 2. And a over 2 is located between 0 and a. That's why these two values of a function are equivalent. So now we have to solve this system of inequalities. Let's factorize both sides of both inequalities and let's draw the solutions and we can see that the answer is all values of a between 2 and 4 which is of course the same answer as in the first solution so that's all for our second solution it was a little shorter than the first one but I wouldn't say that it was easier because we still had to solve a lot of inequalities so let's move on to our third solution and the third solution is going to be functional I'm going to consider consider the left hand side of the equation as a function f of x and I'm going to think of the graph of this function. Now let's think of square root of x and square root of 2a minus x separately. Let's think of their graphs. The graph of square root of x looks like that and the graph of square root of 2a minus x looks like that. They start at x equals 0 and x equals 2a and since there is symmetry I can say that the point of intersection is x equals a. So if I try to graph this sum of these functions I will have something that looks like this. 
these two points are at the same height, the values of the function are equal to each other, f of 0 equals square root of 2a, which is the same as f of 2a. So I have square root of 2a here, and x equals a seems to be the point of maximum, and the maximum value is f of a equals square root of a plus square root of 2a minus a, which is the same thing as square root of a. So we have two square roots of a. So the maximum value is two square roots of a. This is just my intuitive feeling about the graph of that function. Let's prove that it actually looks like that. Let's first state that the domain of f is an interval from 0 up to 2a because of the restrictions of the square roots. Now let's find the derivative of f. f prime of x equals square root of x plus square root of 2a minus x prime and the derivative is equal to that. We want to find the maximum point so we want the derivative to be equal to zero. So we're gonna have to solve that equation which is the same as the equality of these two fractions which is the same as the equality of the denominators so square root of x equals square root of 2a minus x. We can just square both sides of this equation and we're gonna have x equals a. We can see that for values of x greater than a, this fraction is going to be greater than this fraction, so their difference is positive. And vice versa for the values of x less than a, which means that x equals a is indeed the maximum point which proves that the graph of our function looks exactly like that. Now we can draw the graph of the right hand side of this equation and it's just a line. And in order for the equation to have exactly two solutions, this line should cross the graph of f of x exactly in two points. And this happens if a is less than two square roots of a and is more or is equal to square root of 2a. So we have a simple double inequality. Square root of 2a is less or is equal to a, which is less than two square roots of a. Let's square both sides of this inequality and let's divide it by a because we know that a is positive. And once again, we have the same answer. And that was our functional solution of the problem. We had to make some research about the function at the left hand side of the equation. We had to evaluate its derivative and define its maximum point. And I think this solution is great. And let's look at our final fourth solution. And this is a graphical solution. And this time we're going to execute a very neat substitution. We're going to say that v equals square root of x and u equals square root of 2a minus x. And we have to notice that v squared plus u squared equals 2a. And our original equation states that v plus u equals a. And what is this system of equations in terms of variables v and u? This system of equations sets a circle and a line. And the solutions are their points of intersection. And let's draw this circle and line since v and u are not negative because each of them is equal to a square root, we're going to draw a quarter circle. And we need this line to cross this quarter circle at exactly two points. So let's draw two extreme positions of this line. We're going to have two solutions for this position of the line, one solution for this position, and exactly two solutions between them. So let's find the corresponding values of the parameter. We know that the radius of this circle is square root of 2a, so this point has coordinates 0 and square root of 2a. On the other hand, this point is the intersection of the line and v axis. So u equals 0 and v equals a. So we have a equals square root of 2a. Let's solve this equation a squared equals 2a which means that a equals 2 or a equals 0 but we already know that 0 is not an answer so a equals 2. In this position the line is tangent to a circle which means that the radius drawn to the tangent point is perpendicular to the line and we know that the radius of a circle is square root of 2a. This is obviously an isosceles right angle triangle its hypotenuse is square root of 2 
two times greater than its leg so the hypotenuse is equal to two square roots of a and on the other hand this point is a zero because this is an intersection of the line with u axis so v equals zero so u equals a and we have another equation two square roots of a equals a and if we solve that equation we will have a equals four and these are two extreme values of the parameter a i can see that a equals two is an answer because we have exactly two solutions and a equals four is not because we only have one solution so the answer is an interval from two including two up to four not including four and that's it for the graphical solution and i personally think that it is the most beautiful solution here and what's your opinion share it in comments so that's the end of the video thank you for watching it i hope you learned something new see you in the next one